dog who doesn't want to go to sleep. She is just still not going to sleep. Because she didn't go to sleep as well as we would have liked with the propofol, um, we can feel the pulse of the fluid through the vein on that side, so we're 99.9% .9 certain her catheter is okay. But if there's any percent chance that we're not certain, we're going to place a new one because we want her to make sure, we want to make sure she gets her IV fluids during the procedure. And we don't want to take any chance if there's any doubt at all that that catheter is working properly, we're going to place a new one because we don't ever take chances. I'll make do. Okay. It's going to be interesting to see what we find, guys, because she's not in heat and she doesn't have a pile. Where is it? Uh, I don't know. If it's like a retained placenta or something. You wanted the blood pressure on every minute, right? Uh, but, yeah. if she, but if she's this far out, postpartum, like a couple months. Perfect. Molly is now under general anesthesia. Uh, it took a little bit of extra effort to, to knock her down. She um, fought her drugs a little bit, but now she's um, sleeping. And she has all kinds of nice pain medications on board. She is currently on IV fluids, and she's hooked up to a monitor that is monitoring her blood pressure, her ECG, her heart rate, her pulse ox, temperature, respirations, everything else. Um, I also have an assistant in here with me who is going to um, monitor her as well um, during the procedure. So um, this is the laser that I'm going to be using and I'm going to get started. and the blood vessels that feed the ovaries in the uterus were extremely developed. Um, so she definitely had a litter prior to her being um, taken to the rescue league. Um, but there were no complications with the surgery. And so right now she is recovering. Uh, she will get more pain medication this evening and then go home uh, to her foster care with more pain medication. Um, Postoperatively, um, uh, well, preoperatively, she had a little bit more vaginal bleeding, so I looked under the microscope, and so I knew going into the surgery that she did not have a pyometra, which I figured because she was young, but I looked. I also knew that she wasn't in heat, so there was something else causing her bleeding. So after the surgery, I went ahead and I looked at her uterus and on the inside and found that what she actually has was something called subinvolution of placental sites. And normally after they have puppies, the places in the uterus where the puppies are attached uh, you know, heal, so to speak. And what has happened is that hers have not healed. So they were continuing to bleed. So that problem should be solved. And, so uh, the absolutely, because uh, it probably would not have stopped. So hopefully now that that's uh, done, she'll thrive and she'll start to gain weight and, uh, you know, just 
hopefully soon be able to uh, be adoptive. So it's great. So now she's going to be coming out of surgery and recovering. So now Molly is back into her kennel. And what we have to do is we are going to have somebody sit with her, probably Danielle, um, and just sit with her until she's wake enough to have the tube pulled. And basically, we know that when she um, is chewing and swallowing. Now, being a bulldog, although she's most likely not an English bulldog, we're going to treat her that way anyway, we wait a little bit longer than normal to pull the tube. We wait until they're really, really, really chewing. Um, just because of the way they're built, sometimes they can have more problems. Thank you.